Hello everybody and welcome to this little video I'm doing about building a custom guitar amp. I started this off uh, buying a Vox AC100 CPH and it was broken but I knew that and I was trying to fix it but due to the uh, lack of experience I had with doing circuit board repair and the fact that these were overly complicated I ended up needing to try and start from scratch. So what I'm doing instead is I'm going to be um, salvaging some of the parts from it uh, and as you can see here, there's this is just one section of that circuit, but I wanted to show the uh, specific area around these um, capacitors. There are several 100 microfarad capacitors, and uh, so I'm using uh, reusing these, but as you know, they only did 50 here and 100 here, and you'll see on the other circuit design there's actually 100, so I'm going to end up having to get a couple more, but since these large microfarad high voltage caps are a little bit more expensive than the average, I'll be reusing those, as, a few, as well as a few other things like these... Um, uh, bridging diodes that are built into a package. I'll be using those as well. I'll show that in some follow-on videos. But this is just kind of a general view of the overall circuit that uh, Vox designed for the first one. It is a bit hairy. So we'll leave that alone though because I really wanted to move from there to a um, uh, nice screenshot of a the AC100 slash 2 that uh, Jennings created. This is the company that started Vox. This was done in 1965. I don't know if you can quite read that, but that is the year 1965 right here so uh, and as you can see this circuit is um, fairly straightforward and the only major modifications to the circuit are that I put in a reverb which I put in about right here if you can see the mouse there uh, after the tone stack and the initial input and then I also uh, in the modification here removed the brim store because that is something that really most amps don't use anymore and it was an attempt to try and kind of reduce the load to the tubes on first power up um, but uh, you know from what I've been talking on the forums that I frequent a lot to uh, el34world.com they they kind of cover they cover that that's really not that important and it's not as bad as people thought it was as long as you have this, the circuit generally balanced out pretty well it's not a major issue so but as you can see there's two 100 uh, microfarad capacitors here there's a 13 henry choke and if you remember seeing over here they had a 15 henry choke so that if you, as long as you have the the minimum amount of henrys higher only kind of cleans it up more. I think I heard once someone say that that would also kind of add a little bit of compression maybe, but it won't be the end of the world. So it just basically ensures that we have enough. It's similar to things like capacitance and voltage ratings. If you go a little over the capacitance, it just means it'll store more and it will work even more efficiently. And if you go over the voltage rating, it means it can handle more than the volts coming at it. But if you go under those, it could be dangerous. So uh, generally, you always want to go up a little. Um, additionally, in this part of the circuit, I've added some um, resistors that come in from the the grid, uh, the positive grid that's to help, you know, collect the electrons shooting across that ties into the B plus rail, uh, B plus or HT, depending on who you are. Uh, so that the, those are one, uh, one K that I'm attempting at first. And if it doesn't work, I might adjust that. But, uh, from a forum readers or forum posts as well, they indicated most companies, Marshall, et cetera, now use those grid, uh, resistors to the B plus rail. So, and then the final uh, major tweak really, uh, well, no, there's two ma more tweaks. One other one is the, this grounding one. I've added some one ohm resistors to uh, help ease measuring the, uh, uh, current coming off. So that calculating roughly the, uh, plate current is a little bit quicker than, than the, than the average bear, if you will. So, um, over here, I've, uh, got a, this has been modified a decent amount. They have a static designed where you would almost have to tweak some of these resistor values to get your um, bias adjustment instead of adding a bias capacitor or a bias, I'm sorry, a bias potentiometer here and adjusting the kind of the way the circuit works and you'll see that in a minute to be able to support that. So uh, let's go ahead and look at that. I used an app called Express SCH that allows you to uh, draw up a schematic. And so here is the schematic that I've drawn. Uh, this one is uh, almost identical, as I said, in most ways. You can see these 1 ohm resistors here, these other 1K resistors here, and the change to the circuit as well right here. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail on that, but we can discuss it more as, as I'm building out the circuit, hopefully. Um, again, the add of the reverb is that I've added a 100K resistor in the middle here and then a tuna from. The resistor here basically slows the current flow here and lets it want to run down into the reverb circuit. But if we use the, I'll show you a second here, there's a one meg pot. If you crank that all the way down, that means that all of the electrons are going to be stopped coming down this way and we'll just go across this 100K resistor and into this preamp. So uh, the reverb circuit is here. It's a fairly typical one where we bring it in, come into uh, uh, the first stage preamp tube. I'm using half of the V1 that was, you know, wasn't being used in the previous circuit into our v reverb tank uh, that comes back down into the 
recovery circuit here uh, that is uh, another one half of a new, another tube that wasn't in the original design so there's only you know half of that one being used before it returns back into this one meg pot so it's a fairly common reverb circuit uh, just basically stolen from someone on the forums again at el34 world uh, but i've been told these work well with almost any circuit so uh, then we come into our phase inverter then splits off into the power circuit of course we drop off down to the bias circuit and we go into the four el34s um, the original circuit here asked for ECC82s on some and ECC83 on others. Uh, I am going to opt for the ECC83. Uh, I most likely just want to try and give this a little bit more drive, but it would be something that if, if for some reason it seems like it's getting unhealthy in levels of uh, power into the tubes and it's just sounding bad, I might revert back to the 82s. Uh, as I understand, the ECC82s have a much lower order magnitude uh, amplification. I think I remember somewhere that ECC83 can do up to 10 times magnification, whereas these are 1 to 3, but I may be remembering that wrong. Anybody who wants to chime in, let me know. Um, so that's the bulk of it. The good thing is this tone stack also I really loved on my current AC30 that I built, a Vox clone. And uh, so this is, I, I, if I remember, it's identical. So it gets the same Vox uh, tone stack. Uh, so those of you that are Vox aficionados would uh, hopefully like that as well. And, and that's pretty much the bulk of the changes to the way that design was put in. Uh, and then the, the next step I really did was I, I spent some time trying to come up with a layout. Uh, and this is kind of important too because you need to know how you want it to look in the end. So here is the layout with the different tubes, uh, all of the different capacitors. Uh, and resistors on this board that go down into the tone stack and then the reverb section is kind of through here and then we get back into the final part of the preamp section that's the part of the phase inverter uh, and then that sends down uh, part of the output goes to the bias circuit and then another part of that output goes down in and comes into the input phase of the power tubes here as you can see it comes into you know half of it goes here another half of the phase inversion comes here and then they split to each to a pair of resistors that go to a different tube then the output of those is coming or sorry the uh, the power of those and the output of those comes down through this choke system and then off uh, to the uh, uh, into the if you look the um, v the this top part here is v, v5 and v6 are here and v7 and v8 are here that fifth you know, the plate comes down and into this this either half of the output transformer to the speaker, and then here's those caps and where they connect in. So uh, ultimately, this this is kind of the gist of the layout and design that I'm going to be implementing. I've got uh, a couple of videos I'll make that show you kind of the board here. It was designed by me, but then built by Doug. He will do any kind of uh, design you want. He's pretty cool about that, and you can use a tool he has on his website to help design your board, so it's, it's pretty cool. So at any rate, uh, on to the next video. All right, there was one other part that I failed to mention. Um, I was talking briefly about the capacitors, um, but I didn't cover uh, what they're doing here is that they have a high voltage, 497 volts, and these capacitors are rated at 450. So they're doing a little trick that I was also taught on the same forums I've mentioned before, is that if you do capacitors in series, um, they uh, end up giving you a much lower capacitance rating, but a higher voltage level, and then if you do uh, parallel capacitance, the parallel ones kind of add up, they sum up the two. So um, uh, the parallel would be, you know, this type of a section here, but the series would be this type of a section here. So if you put two in series, uh, these two 100 microfarad capacitors become equivalent of a 50 microfarad capacitor, but then they have 900 volts because they're two 450 volts. Then you have the same thing on the second pair, but when you put equivalency, if you kind of now treat these as a single unit and put them into the parallel level that they're at, they become 250 microfarad capacitors at 900 volts that add up to 100 microfarad. So with this kind of a setup, you take uh, four 100 microfarad 450 volts capacitors and make them into something that can handle up to 900 volts. So they won't burn up at this higher vol uh, vol voltage level. Additionally, the obviously on this side, they only needed to have 50 um, microfarads on the second half in their particular circuit design because they have two 150s in series. So that makes them uh, 50 microfarad at 450 volts. I need for the build that I have 100 as we talked about. So I'll have to build something like this. So I've bought a couple more and I'll discuss that a little bit more. Uh, also, I was able to salvage, I, I mentioned briefly the salvage, but I forgot to mention I was able to salvage these 1K 5 watt resistors because I also wanted to add them into this grid uh, two. Uh, that goes to the HT rail or B plus rail, uh, and that gave me another item. We'll discuss that a little bit more in a video where I'm showing the parts and components. 
so ultimately, uh, another thing I did also get was four 220k uh, resistors because I was told that that is a good way of helping in rush current. So I, I think I mentioned the brim store was removed, but one of the ways to help resist in rush current and allow the caps to charge slowly is those resistors that kind of slow the initial inrush and will reduce the voltage until they're charged up before it heads on down to the later parts of the circuit. So couple little smart design uh, decisions that I got from the guys at EL34 World. Again, I love that forum, full of uh, brilliant uh, amp gurus, um, and they all seem to really love these old style circuits, and I've been having a lot of fun building them, so we'll get into more detail about that later.